Dr. Tom Katubo is with us. Uh, uh, we have two special guests joining us today, uh, Linda Lanier and, uh, and her son Joe are with us today. So, uh, Senator Kakubo, you know, if, uh, you know, he's right here with us. And uh, if you could tune us in to Linda and her son, Joe, are we going to do that right now? Sure, Linda. Uh... This time. It's just me. Joe is still in the hospital, and he still happened to be sedated uh, because uh, he is coughing a lot, and his vitals are going up. So, uh, but I'm sure you will hear Joe's story. He will be on again for you. Um, are you going to start the pictures, or am I going to start talking first? Linda, you do whatever you'd like to do. Okay. All right. Um, before I start, I want to. Th I want to. I'd like to thank God and all of our friends and family everywhere for supporting us with prayer, because we wouldn't be this far without them. In addition, I would like to thank the nurses at CAMC Open Heart Recovery and SICU, along with pulmonary associates, Dr. Kister, Jimmy Joseph, and Darshan Devay. Without their dedication, compassion, and knowledge, along with prayers, Joe wouldn't be here. Now I'd like to share Joey's story. Um, he decided not to get vaccinated. And I hope by sharing his story that it will change some people's minds. Joe wears many hats and, has, and is known by many names. Some of you know him as Joe. Some of you know him as Smokin' Joe, Zeke from Cabin Creek, Goody, and I'm sure there are some that I don't know about. He may be just an acquaintance or a longtime friend. Some of you might have been an opponent of his in the ring or on the football field, or you might have been a customer of his in his barber shop. He also wears the hat of a general manager for Canal Falls PSD with pride. However, the hat that Joe is most proud of is the hat of a Christian man and the father to his two sons. On July 16, 2021, Joe went on a trip to an attraction that has both inside and outside facilities. When we made these plans, uh, everybody had kind of slacked off on wearing masks and social distancing. So we didn't give it a thought. We went. This place is a place that ha that puts about uh, puts thousands of people through in a day, with no social distancing, no mask, and no ventilation. It was a very poor choice on our part. And for that, Joey ended up with COVID. I ended up with COVID, and my husband ended up with COVID. I'd had the vaccine, so did my husband and we had the antibodies and we did not have a bad, hard time. But Joey, on the, other, on the other hand, he was on his family vacation and he became very sick. Started throwing up, he threw up for like a week. He thought he had a stomach bug. He came, then when he came back from his vacation, I told him, I said, Joey, you need to go straight to Memorial and you need to be seen. And he did that and he was admitted. But before Joey got so sick that he couldn't talk, he told people, get vaccinated. You don't want this stuff. Several of his friends have gotten vaccinated since that time. Well, the next morning after Joey went to the hospital, I received a call from Dr. Takubo. He said, your boy's in trouble. Joey was put on the vent and the ECMO machine, which is a machine that functions for your lungs, that lets your lungs rest so that you can uh, get a little bit healthier and your lungs work a little bit better. Joe began at that moment to fight for his life. He's still fighting. The ECMO was removed after about five weeks. 
weeks, but he's still sedated on the vents, and we're now headed into seven weeks. Joey chose not to be vaccinated because he listened to all the negative and false accusations about vaccination. Being in the medical field myself, I tried to convince him. However, it didn't, it didn't work. He listened to his friends, he listened to social media, and he just listened to what I call the garbage that's out there. If you have questions, go to a physician. Go to someone that knows. Let them answer your questions because that's where the true answers are. This COVID is a monster. I mean, if it can take down my son, the MMA fighter, the tough man, which he's one times three, maybe four, linebacker, a very strong person, knocked down, I mean, completely knocked down, can probably cannot even lift his arms now. What's it going to do to the average person? What's it going to do to your children? You need to take this very serious. And before I go, I want to share one more thing with you. When I told my grandson, which is Joey's sons, Jason's 11 and Jackson's 7, I'm going to tell your dad's story. Jason said, I want to tell them my story. I asked him, I said, what, what do you want to say? He said, I miss my daddy. I want him to wake up. I need to talk to my daddy. Jackson, on the other hand, he's a little bit quieter, but I was watching them yesterday while their mom visited Joey. And Jackson told me, he said, I said, your birthday's coming up. He said, yes. He said, for my birthday, I want my daddy to get better. So everybody, do your part. Get vaccinated. Social distance. Wear your mask. And avoid huge crowds. Thank you. Linda, before we go to Doc, let me just say this, you know, I, uh, the notes I had, I was very hopeful that, that Joe was going to be able to speak to us from, a, from the hospital. Uh, I would just say to you, it, it takes so much courage and so much courage from, his, from him and everything to be fighting. And, and just like you just said, if this dreaded disease can take down this tremendous athlete, a man that is strong beyond belief and very young in years, uh, can it not take us all down? And that's what this testimony is all about. And it's a family that has absolutely stepped up to try to help all of us. And, uh, and with all that, a million, be in prayers, but especially prayers for those grandsons and those grand and those kids of this great man. You know, uh, it's. Uh, can you just imagine? Can you just imagine? And it's happened over and over and over. But uh, sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, just saying, I just would like to talk to my dad or grandma, or mom, but uh, thank you so much. It, it's real courage, real courage, and, and Doc, please add, add what you'd like to talk to us about, please. Yeah, Linda, thank, thank you for that and for getting that message out, and um, you know, we'll certainly keep Joey in our prayers, and, and we're going to continue to fight for him just as hard as we possibly can. Um, Linda's story it is not unique since the beginning of this pandemic um, we've had to as as medical workers the nurses and respiratory therapists the physicians 
they've had to relive this over and over and over time and time again and um, at the very beginning of this when we saw it coming down and we uh, tried to prepare you know the initial computer model showed that West Virginia was an older population we're a sicker population we were going to get hit exceptionally hard uh, I got on the phone with my colleagues at Marshall University and WVU, and, and what we tried to do is, is coalesce all the information we had at the time to best prep uh, to take care of the citizens of West Virginia and to make sure that even if you were at a bigger hospital, smaller hospital, all the critical care docs would make themselves available to take calls to assist the smaller hospitals. And at the time, we had a, a regimen of, of uh, hydroxychloroquine, um, azithromycin, uh, avoid nebulizers, avoid steroids. That That's what the medical literature had at the time and said, this is what you should do. And over the course of this pandemic, we've tried it all. We have tried ivermectin. We have tried high-dose and held steroids. Uh, you name it, we've tried. Anything we could possibly do to help get people through this and survive, we've tried it. I've said from the very beginning, Pay attention to your hospitals. You know, the, the media uh, is, is so toxic these days. Uh, in any situation, it can't be too too innocent that, that people try to sway it. But I've said from the beginning, watch your local hospital. That will tell you what's happening in your community. And what we're seeing now is this is a pandemic primarily of the unvaccinated. Uh, we've tried a lot of things. A lot of things didn't work. Uh, a lot of things we were told not to do turned out we should have been doing. So as we've gone along and become more educated and more experienced, uh, we've learned a lot. And, we, and, and things like ECMO that, that Joey was on, uh, there is zero doubt he would not have survived had we, had we done that. He's still fighting, but it gave him a chance. It gave him a fight. And so we're, we're doing all that we can. The governor and the states helped tremendously in, in trying to get additional resources, everything we've come to ask for. But what I would encourage everybody to do is be careful about what you're reading on social media, what you're reading uh, on the Internet. Listen to your, your local providers that are seeing this firsthand, that are having to sit down and have conversations like we had with Linda time and time again. It doesn't matter if it's mama or papa or mom or dad or your husband or, or your child. We love them. We want to save them. We're doing everything we can to help them. But we can help ourselves because the one thing I'm seeing is the vaccine does work. 88 to 95 percent of all patients being admitted are unvaccinated. So you have to look at the real numbers, whether you, you like Fauci, don't like Fauci, whatever. The vaccines are working. So when they come to me and say, Doc, what works and what doesn't work, I'm telling you, the vaccines are working. They're keeping people safer. They're keeping people out of the hospital. Linda and her husband did great because they were vaccinated, and the same virus uh, is doing something horrible to their, their healthy 40-year-old son. So that's the take-home message. Um, uh, again, keep everybody in their thoughts and prayers, and please keep, keep your health care workers uh, in your thoughts and prayers because – uh, it, it is it is rough to go in every day and do a tough job already, um, but to see the absolute heartbreak on the families uh, of these individuals um, has a toll. And uh, keep keep them in your thoughts and prayers also. We've still got a, a real resource with us, and uh, Doctor Takubo. And uh, but but if Doctor Takubo would would speak again. He, he, we were we were talking as Dr. Marsh was speaking and everything, but uh, I think it's so impactful and so important for, that you hear from another a real resource and everything. You've heard from Dr. Marsh and myself over and over, Dr. Amjad and everything, but uh, Doc, if you could come back and talk to us about what we were talking about. Yeah, thank you, Governor. So one, one of the concerns that a lot of people say is, well, I don't want to take the vaccine because there's there's a potential for some side effect that may may happen. So, you know, the two things I tell people is is show me a hospital that's overran by by vaccine injuries. I mean, I've yet to admit one person or take care of one person with an injury from the vaccine. Now, 
does uh, when you get the vaccine, there's a difference between an adverse reaction and side effects. So if if you get the vaccine and you have aches and chills and and soreness in your arm, that that's letting you know the vaccine worked. In fact, I would almost be a little more concerned if I had no reaction at all to the vaccine. But uh, what the governor and I was talking about is is in the office, in the outpatient setting, people say, well, I'll, I'll just take I'll just get covid um, every single day. Every single day in the outpatient office, we're seeing patients with complications from COVID infection. In fact, the literature clearly states up to five months, many people are still having symptoms and not fully back to normal after COVID infection. Uh, we're, we're treating every day blood clots in the lungs, blood clots in the legs, uh, problems with the heart, hypertension, uh, people that's had strokes, uh, people that's still having chronic shortness of breath from COVID infection. So who knows what COVID infection is going to do long term? Um, you know, we, we know that uh, there's, there's people all over the Internet that's concerned about the possible long-term effects from a vaccine. But, again, look at what's going on in your local hospitals. The people that are, that are primarily dying, the people that are primarily uh, in the ICUs on a ventilator, 95 to 99 percent are n- unvaccinated individuals. So even though you may survive COVID, uh, it, it's just worrisome to me to see, you know, two, five, ten years, what's going to be the long-term effect from that COVID infection? Yeah, you may get some antibody protection uh, and, you, and you survive the initial illness, but what's going to be the long-term effect? And I think that's something that, um, that a lot of people don't, don't pay attention to.